do the first instalment of my reading a story to you guys as often as I can. I'm going to start off with an Alex Ryder book. It was a book that Year 6 studied during World Book Day, and it follows on from some of the other Alex Ryder stories, and it's called Undercover, Four Secret Files. I'm going to read an introduction to you. Have you ever thought about becoming a paid assassin? Inside this book, you'll find two stories about Yasin Grigorovich, the cold-blooded killer who turned up in quite a few of the Alex Ryder books. It includes a Stormbreaker and Eagle Strike. After you've read about him, you may decide that life of an assassin is not for you, and it's probably a sensible decision. But I have to say, I loved writing about him. There's something very interesting about someone who has no morality, no sense of right or wrong, who do anything for money. He reminds me a bit of my publisher. I even made him the hero of his own novel, Russian Roulette. Do look for it in your school library. If not, ask your fabulous librarian, Mrs. Jones. I've added it that part. Mental Heads, Metal Heads, the story of a horrible school inspector was written specially for World Book Day and has never been published before. Ah. The story is set in Russia in 1990, or thereabouts, in a very different world to the one that we inhabit now. It might interest you to know that everything I write about Yasin's school is based on facts. Children in Russian schools wore uniforms and were given lessons in NGP, or military training, and were always taught how to handle machine guns. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this rather unusual twist at the end. It certainly made me smile. The other story, The White Carnation, finds Yasin a little later in his career. Again, it's got an unexpected ending. In a way, it's a story about unhappiness, but it's also about hope and about life. It originally appeared in an early edition of Russian Roulette, but unless you hunt around antique bookshops, you're probably unlikely to find it. Double Agent tells the story of another assassination. Maybe Undercover is the wrong title for this book. Undertaker may have been better. It describes a terrible incident in Alex Ryder's life. Although he does not appear himself, he is only three months old. I wrote it as a sort of epilogue of the seventh Alex Ryder novel, Snakehead, which is still one of my favourites. It introduced Alex's godfather, a man called Ash, and this is very much his story too. I think it's interesting to know what made Alex. This fills in one of the gaps. But an Alex Ryder book, even a fairly short one, wouldn't be complete without an adventure starting with Alex himself. And to begin this collection, I wrote a brand new story, The Man with the Wrong Shoes. It takes place just after Alex gets back from France on his second mission to infiltrate the weird Point Blank Academy run by sinister Dr. Grish. If you've read the book, you'll remember that it ends with a fight at Alex's school in West London. This is, if you like, what happens next. I often wonder what the head teacher of Alex's school must have thought about all the strange things that were going on. 2020 is a landmark year for Alex Ryder. You may have noticed the silver flash on the cover of this book. I haven't done. Looking now, maybe. It's 20 years. It's a reminder how 20 years since the first Alex Ryder novel came out. I find it impossible to believe that so much time has gone by and still makes me angry to think that Alex is still in his early teens. I've been getting older and older. Walker Books is publishing a special anniversary edition of Stormbreaker in February. Maybe they'll also buy me a cake. April is even more exciting for me anyway. That's when the 13th Alex Ryder book comes out. I'm not allowed to give too much away, but it's called Nightshade, and it takes place a few weeks after Alex has returned to school following his encounter with the vicious Grimaldi brothers in the south of France and in Wales. The new novel is set in the UK, Gibraltar, I will get better at turning these pages, honestly, Crete, and finishes with a devastating terrorist attack on London which only Alex can prevent. You can let me know what you think about it, but I'm quite the optimistic. It's the longest Alex Ryder book so far, with the most action. May sees the publication of the sixth graphic novel, Archangel, Brilliantly adapted by Anthony Johnston, sadly someone stole the H in his first name, and illustrated by Amrit Birdie. In August, the paperback edition of Secret Weapon comes out, and if you haven't read it, I hope you will. Finally, news of an Alex Ryder television series. We filmed the second novel, Point Blank, starring Otto Ferrantes Alex as his best friend. As I sit here writing this, it's all only October 2019, and I don't know if it's going to be on ITV, BBC, Netflix, Amazon or wherever, but I'm pretty sure it'll be somewhere. I've seen the first three episodes and I couldn't be happier. Otto is perfect as Alex. 
The series has a slightly darker tone, more adult feel than the book, but it's still very close to what I wrote. I've only seen rough cuts of the ironboard snowboard scene, but it looks fantastic. So that's the world of Alex Ryder. I feel a bit embarrassed that I've written the whole of this introduction and I've barely mentioned World Book Day, which is what this book is really all about. I'm delighted that Alex is invited to join this wonderful initiative which aims to put a book into the hands of every child and young person in the UK. I don't want to go on about how great reading is. If you've managed to get all the way to the end of this introduction, you must be a pretty keen reader, or interested in your teacher, Mrs Tomlinson. I would like to mention how fantastic it is to own books. I have two or three thousand of them in my house, so although I won't pretend I've read them all, at least not from cover to cover, i found something valuable in every single one of them, and when I see them sitting on my shelf, it feels like they're friends. I can't imagine growing up without being surrounded by books, and although this is one of the very small, I hope it will be the start of a collection, and that one day, years from now, you'll find it and remember how much you enjoyed it. That's the thing about books, they stay with you for life. Anthony Horowitz. So that's the introduction to these short stories, and I'm going to read them and popping them on the YouTube channel. Uh, I have got my fingers crossed, because you know how good I am with technology. If you have read some books that you really enjoy and you want to share it with the rest of us, just send myself or Miss Moore an email and we'll pop it on the weekly sway. We really are missing you guys and we want to see what you're doing and keep in touch with you. Happy Easter!